Hello and welcome to an Idol Call Food. I'm your host, Jake T. Tapius, and today's podcast episode is being hosted from the comfort of my moving car. I promise to keep my eyes on the road and to be safe, but I wanted to share with you one of the things that I believe hinders most people from achieving their desired goals when it comes to weight loss, to sustainability. And I wanted to chat with you about that today, but before I do so, I want to speak with you about the EYBplantfuel.com supplements that make a significant difference in how you show up in your day-to-day go to eybplantfuel.com pick up your supplements today and get in the absolute best shape of your life all right let's jump right into it one of the common denominators i see with most people that come on our program is that they have a story and most of the time that story is not an empowering story it's not a story that is actually propelling people forward to to achieve their dreams to keep the weight off to actually embrace a healthy lifestyle but instead their stories such as i'm big bone i'm italian i have a big appetite i look at food and i gain weight and all the different stories and things that we have a tendency to say to ourselves because it's a way to mitigate the discomfort and the emotions of not being able to achieve goals but i think there's more than just a story i think that stories are things that we sometimes create in our own mind and 99.9 percent of the time when those those stories are scary they're things that we're making up in our own mind because our brain is a preservation mechanism and it's there to protect us and so we come up with the wildest stories because the brain doesn't want to be in any way shape or form in, in any kind of discomfort and so a couple of months ago i'm getting my girls ready for school we say our prayers we say our goodbyes Sure enough, you're out the door. Next thing you know, I hear my wife scream and call my name. I walk outside and I see them staring at the floor. And my wife says, there's a tiny gator and the mom must be close by. I look down and I see this tiny little perfect shiny gator just standing there right by the door. My four-year-old and my eight-year-old are staring at it. They're, They're panicking. My wife is just absolutely losing it. So automatically what I do is I start searching around the house because I'm looking for this gator's mom or dad, right? I'm looking for the big gator. I went around the house. I looked under the cars. I couldn't find anything. And I'm thinking to myself, what is this little gator doing here? Now, let me give you some context. I live right next to a canal. So we see gators all the time. That That's a very common sight in my neighborhood. Not all the time, but oftentimes they come out of the canal. They'll walk into this little man-made pond that we have behind our house. And uh, yes, Florida is a very crazy, scary place sometimes. And so, you know, uh, it was normal to see a small gate. So I'm looking for the dad, the mom, because that's who we're really scared of. I'm trying to figure out if I should just like swat the, the, the little gator, but I didn't want to hurt it. And then I started to think, what if it hurts me? It's that tiny, but you never know. Sure enough, here we are 12, 15 minutes into this whole ordeal, trying to figure out how to get rid of this little gator. When all of a sudden my four-year-old says, wait a second, that's actually my toy. (laughs) And she picks up the little gator. My wife and I, we're just hysterically laughing and feeling so silly because for 15 minutes, we stared at this plastic little toy. And the whole time we thought it was a real gator. More importantly, we thought that it's mom and dad were somewhere around and they were going to eat us. Now, that day, my girls were late for school. I was thrown off because I had to go do a bunch of things, but I just, I couldn't stop laughing. And then I kept asking myself the question, what other stories am I telling myself that are holding me back, that are making me late to bringing my goals to fruition, that are making me hold back in certain areas that I should be pushing forward, and so on and so forth. And it just made me think of all the interactions that I have with members and the interactions that I've had for the past 23 years of the stories that people tell themselves, because I truly believe that 80% of the challenge, if not more, is in your mind. The battle is fought in the mind. The dynamics are there. People know what to do to lose weight, right? It's not a knowledge gap. We have gurus and we have books and we have conferences and we have all these things that teach people how to lose weight, how to live a healthy life. So then the question is, why don't people do it? Well, they don't do it because there is a mental block. And that block oftentimes is a story that we're telling ourselves. 
that's too hard. I can only think of the first three letters of the word diet. I feel like I'm going to die. It's not sustainable. What's the purpose of losing all this weight if at some point I'm going to gain it back? I want to be able to be free. And the list goes on and on and on and on. And it's based on those stories that sometimes we actually engage in certain programs and things are going well and we self-sabotage. As soon as we get to the goal, we self-sabotage. I see people do it all the time. I see people that get to a certain point, they, they, they lose 25, 30 pounds, and I hear them, they'll message me and say, hey, I just want you to know that when I hit the 30 pound mark, I always hit a plateau. And that's the most interesting thing I've ever heard, right? Because what, I, what I'm hearing right away is like, hey, my limitation is that I can only lose 30 pounds. And generally when I lose 30 pounds, because it happened to me once, this is what happens all the time. So I actually, and this is actually what happens, people subconsciously start to sabotage because your brain is there to you know reassure you that you're sane so if this is what you're believing subconsciously you start to self-sabotage you start to snack you start to eat things you shouldn't eat you start to do things that you shouldn't be doing because the brain wants the assurance of what you believe i say all this to say that if you want to reverse engineer that whole idea and this is a little foo-foo but hear me out because it, it, it really really works until you can actually see something in your mind, it's very hard to materialize. If you believe that you can only do certain things, that will be a self-fulfilling prophecy. Let me give you another example. Yesterday, I went to uh, the cold plunge. So I went to the sauna uh, for 30 minutes and then I went in the cold plunge. The first time I went to the cold plunge, I was only able to do three minutes. My second time around, I did two five minute sessions. So I was in there for five minutes, got out, and then got back in for another five minutes. Yesterday, I was in there for 12 minutes. And the only reason I didn't stay 15 was because my wife was with me and she wanted to be in there for another, she wanted to get in there for three minutes. My point is this, in the beginning, had you said to me, JT, you're gonna have to go in that pool plunge for 12 minutes, I would have said, you're crazy. I can't do that. I've never done that before. That That's probably not even healthy. I'll probably get a heart attack. And I would have made all these stories up in my mind. But because I kept pushing the envelope every single uh, time I went there, now it just became normal for me to continue to progress and continue to push the envelope. Next time I go in there, I'm going to go in there for 15 minutes. But now my mind understands exactly what needs to happen and what is possible. The same thing is true with Roger Bannister, the guy that ran the four minute mile. Prior to him running that four minute mile, no one had ever done that. Experts were saying that if you ran a four minute mile, you would have a heart attack and your, and your heart would implode. Well, he did it and a couple, uh, a couple of months later, a bunch of other people broke the four minute mile. Once again, we have these limitations that we have in our own mind and they hold us back. So I wanna leave you with this. If you think of biblical stories, if you think of the Israelites leaving Egypt, the ocean parting for them, them going through going into the promised land, their enemies being basically defeated by, you know, God really, really providing for the Israelites, them having manna in the desert, and yet they grumbled and, you know, and, and they gave Moses such a hard time. Uh, and, and they just couldn't believe it because they couldn't see beyond their own limitations because they had preconceived notions because they were used to being slaves and because they, they their mentality was, well, at least in Egypt, we had food. Whereas there was so much more for them in the promised land, but they couldn't see beyond their limitations. And oftentimes this is what we do when we engage in any kind of goal, anytime we're pursuing a goal, anytime that we're seeking to do something great, it, it's always those mental limitations that push us back. So I wanna leave you with this. If you are on a journey to lose weight, if you are on a journey to change your lifestyle, not just for yourself, but you're, at, you're, you're honestly, you've thought about this before. You want to leave a legacy for your family of health and wellness, then it's going to require a mindset shift. If you don't change your mind shift, if you don't shift your mind, uh, this is never going to happen, right? That is the number one thing that needs to happen. Second to that, you need a coach. You need someone that can guide you in this process. If you don't have one yet, go to emptyyourbucketplan.com. Check out the things that we have going on there. Um, there's some amazing things that you can achieve in a very, very short period of time that will get you on the right track. 
get you to, to, to move exactly in the direction that you have to move in so that you don't waste any more time so that you actually start to think different uh, differently about food so that you have the right expectations and so that you tell yourself the right stories and you start moving in the right direction once i hope you enjoyed this podcast episode my name is jt tapis with an idol call food i'll talk to you guys soon Bye.